What's up, knife people? I want to show you a knife that I have on loan from my buddy Jared, and it is made by Kaiser. Very attractive little knife, I gotta say. This is the Kaiser Vanguard Mini Sheepdog. I know that's a mouthful. Or it's the C01C. It is a nice little knife. The fit and finish and everything is great on it. And I want to talk about some dimensions first. So uh, the total knife is 5.77 inches. The blade is 2.63. Cutting edge, 2.5. The blade thickness is 0.11. It actually looks like a very beefy knife. It's a cleaver or a sheep's foot blade style. It is a satin finish, of course. The handle is 3.14. I just did a review not too long ago, and a handle on a knife was uh, 3 and 3 quarters, I think. And I said that is the smallest handle I would ever buy. Um, and I just, I can't do, I can't hold it. So um, if you are a person that likes smaller knives, I think this would be a great knife for you. Um, I carry a lot of big knives and I just can't stand not having my pinky on the handle. Uh, it's the same thing with a pistol. If I have a smaller concealed carry pistol, I buy, you know, a two round extension for the magazine just so I can have a full grip on my hand. That's just me though. Uh, this is not a tactical knife. This is not going to war. I don't think Navy SEALs are using these, so I shouldn't get too worked up about it, right? Not every situation is a survival tactical situation. Um, this is a very, very awesome knife. I want to do some comparisons. Uh, this is an extremely common Ontario Rat 1. Probably the best budget knife on earth, I would say. Another budget knife. And both of these, you know, are cheaper. Kershaw Blur. So these are the size knives I would normally carry. You know what I mean? Super Freak. So those are the knives I would normally carry. But let's do a comparison with some more common uh, smaller knives just so you have an idea because you might have one of these and you can compare it so this is the ZT0450 CF looks a lot like my old 0452 CF pretty awesome knife I gotta say that is also Jared's knife so these have been in my safe this is the Spyderco Dragonfly pretty cool little knife that is also Jared's. This is also Jared's. I'm going to be doing reviews on these coming up really soon here. This is the Ferrum Forge Lackey fixed blade. Very, very cool knife. So I don't think a lot of people would have this, but um, it's very cool. So with this Kaiser knife, it's really sold out in a lot of different locations if you go online. Uh, it's a very popular knife came out I believe in 2018 and it's a great seller for them this would be great for cutting boxes and tape I think maybe not a whole lot of boxes but you know if you work in an office setting or something like that I think this is a great knife it's totally acceptable um, when you open it this is a different shape knife but it's not um, murdery I guess so you don't have to worry about that if you are worried about it this knife goes for about $62 okay Kaiser um, from what I understand I guess they've been around since 1999 but they started making knives in 2012 this knife does come from China and from everything I've read the reviews are great on Kaiser knives for quality control um, some people say they are on the forefront of quality control knives from China. They've just really done well and created some high-end knives out of China, which is not a common thing, and it's probably a difficult task from what I understand. The blade steel here is a VG10. VG10 is a good steel. Um, it's not a budget steel. 
it is not a super steel, okay? Um, it falls in line with like a D2, a 154CM, an A2. It's good stuff. You can sharpen it razor sharp. It would do almost anything that you need, and I think it would be fine. So no complaints there for, right, $62. We have to keep things into perspective here, into perspective. This knife was designed by Chris Conaway, and the handle thickness on this knife is 0 0.45, which is not too bad, but it, it is a beefy little knife. You know, it has a full stainless liner. It is a liner lock. Uh, it doesn't travel too far over on that tang, but I don't think it would be an issue with what this knife is going to be used for. Okay, so... I think that's fine. Um, if it was too far over to the left, if it was any further, I would have to complain. But again, keep things into perspective. This is not a tactical knife. Um, I don't think this is going to close. You know, I'm not going to do any spine whacking or anything. I did press on it earlier um, pretty hard, and it didn't budge at all. So maybe if it traveled a little further over, I would feel a little bit better, but um, it might do that with time as well. The detent on this knife is fantastic. See if you can hear this and see it. It just locks in, um, but it's not too hard. Right when I did that, it's not too hard to open. Um, but when you close this thing, it really just, it's kind of like a vault. I like it. It's cool. And you might even be able to see the liner move if I get this into position correctly. There you go. It's uh, it's very, very solid. I would not be afraid about this knife opening in my pocket or anything like that. With that being said, um, one thing I will complain about, so I'm kind of going back and forth, good and bad, good and bad, you know, pros and cons for sure. It's hard to find the perfect knife. This pocket clip is a right-handed pocket clip. I'm not a right-handed individual. And there is no pocket clip right here. There are no holes to put a pocket clip. I'm not sure how difficult that would be to drill two holes and put them over here. Um, I am not a professional in the manufacturing world. I do not understand all the complexities with manufacturing knives, but... Um, I would be in favor of this knife if it had a reversible pocket clip. So my hand would slide like this in my pocket, not along the blade. Okay, so little things, little nitpicky things. I'm really not a picky individual. I really like most knives and I get a kick out of them. Uh, you know, Nick Shabazz, I uh, definitely subscribe to him and I watch his videos and they're great. But man, that dude is picky. Um, I can't imagine living with that dude, but uh, like I said, he's great at what he does and people love it. You know, he's really popular. It's just, he's so picky um, and I'm not too much. So I would like to be able to hold my whole hand on that handle. I would like to be able to put the pocket clip over for left-handed uh, carry. This is a caged ceramic ball bearing in there, uh, ball bearing pivot, I should say, and that's what gives it this just silky smooth feel that you cannot get from, I don't think you can get from a bronze phosphor bushing or anything like that. Most of my knives are not ball bearing. Uh, it does just give a super, super smooth deployment. I mean, it's silk. Um, and you really only get that feel to me from ball bearings. Um, there are pros and cons to that as far as everyday use in the office and cutting tape and envelopes and maybe a couple boxes or something, no problem. Um, I love the deployment. I think it's really comfortable and it just feels really solid, especially the lock and everything. But, but, um, you know, I did a review a while back on my ZT0452CF, which is also a ball bearing system. And I used it in the barn, believe it or not. And I was cutting grain. Uh, I cut grain bags. I cut some hay bales open and did some other stuff, the shavings maybe. 
and I got some debris and dust inside those ball bearings, and it did impact the knife uh, in a negative way, very negative. And it's not that the knife wouldn't open, you know, it wasn't game over or anything like that, but uh, it was opening very slow, and it was affecting the knife in a negative way as far as the performance goes, especially if I was in an emergency situation and needed to open the knife. So as long as you're not going to get a lot of dust and dirt and stuff like that around these bearings, it's not going to be an issue. But um, it's a possibility, and that's things that some people worry about with a ball bearing system. So I don't think this is a heavy use uh, knife that Navy SEALs are using in Afghanistan and getting sand and stuff in the pivot. It's not a big deal, but it's just little things that I worry about. From what I understand, as of May 2019 is what I read, they do have a lifetime warranty. You just have to be able to justify it, and you have to be able to somehow prove that the knife was not abused or anything like that. So I think it's a great knife. I highly recommend it, especially if you're into smaller knives. I think you would really, really like this. Um, it is hard to find, but they are out there, so keep your eyes open. Um... Like I said, it's been around since 2018, and it is one of their best sellers, and it's moving quick. So with the G10 and all the machining and everything on here, I think they've done a fantastic job. They really have. There's no hot spots. You know, it feels really comfortable, especially the deployment. And then when you go to close it, you know, it feels good all around. So how can you go wrong with that, right? They do have a full-size version of this, right? This is the Mini. Uh, it's something to keep in mind, and hopefully you guys have a better idea now of the Kaiser Vanguard Mini Sheepdog. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you want to see more reviews like this, just hit the subscribe button, and I have a lot more. I have tons of friends with knives, um, some really cool knives, and they are letting me borrow them and loan them. I just keep them locked up in my safe, uh, so they're you know, for safekeeping until I review them and then I just return them. So I really appreciate Jared letting me borrow this cool little knife. And as always, guys, I really hope you have a good rest of the day. Thanks for watching.